Hello, I'm Dr. Turlop. Are you ready for your checkup today? <coughs> <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I should wear my mask. Here we go. Okay, are you ready for your checkup today? Yes? You got, got it all figured out? <gasps> okay. No, is it? Okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Now we're all set. Okay. Uh, open up your mouth for me real quick and say, ah, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, bigger. Ah. Uh. Oh, that's perfect. Yes, very good. Actually, I need you to do that again, but I'm gonna put this sharp stick in your mouth. Just one more time. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> ah, very nice. Everything. Oh, it's bleeding a little bit in there now. Uh, that's a splinter. I just, you know what? That'll go away on its own. Don't worry about it. Uh, looks like everything's good. You check out. Um, I don't really. Oh, uh, well, I uh, I don't actually have a real medical degree or um, any degree, in fact. Um, but I work at the Push Medical Center, so you're you're good to go. You should go take your class now. Go, go do your class. Go. Go. Everything's fine. Go. Go. Go on and get out of here. You don't have any insurance anyway. All right, everyone. Welcome to lecture 19. Uh, this should be Thursday of the fourth week at this point. I um, encourage you guys to keep getting ahead. If you are watching these lectures ahead of time, it'll only benefit you. Okay. So first thing I want to address is there's a quiz on what would be Friday, um, which would be tomorrow in theory. Uh, but anyways, uh, what we have for this quiz is just pretty much Laplace transforms. There's not much else that we're going to be doing. Um, so there'll be just some straight up Laplace transforms, and then there's going to be a little bit of what we're doing today, which is effectively Laplace transforms, but it's just impedance and admittance. Okay. So what you'll need to be able to do is apply these formulas and uh, use the Laplace transform in some way. Um, it'll probably be pretty simple, but um, should be no surprise if you can do, uh, you know, the homeworks from these sections, you'll be just fine because it'll be very similar to the homework. Okay, so uh, given the fact that we're going to be having this quiz, <laughs> probably good to talk about the stuff that's going to be on there. Um, so today we're going to discuss impedance and admittance, okay? And what we're doing here is, uh, or what we've done in the past, is we've seen that we can turn differential equations into linear equations. So we've seen this probably more than once here, uh, but effectively that's the trick that we've been using all along. The price for that trick, or one of the added benefits actually, um, not really so much a cost, is that we get a little modification to Ohm's law if we translate this into the Laplace domain. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So you may be asking yourself, um, I have all these, these rules in, in this space that I'm used to. What happens when I um, start applying time-based systems and I convert them to the Laplace domain? Well, actually something rather nice happens. So... In the past, you know, Ohm's law works great for a simple resistor, but not so much for these reactive elements. So we have these continuity equations, and we're going to consider them in combination with Ohm's law. And they're going to give us something new. So if we take the Laplace transform of the continuity equations, we end up with the following. This is just to demark a, a barrier between these two, but VL in T... I should probably specify that in T, uh, becomes VL in S, and it's a capital VL. But it's not just going from, you know, this AC-DC mix to, you know, some DC. It's going to the frequency domain, right? And the reason we know that is because of the input variable. Okay, you guys should all be familiar with this by now. But what I end up with is I take the Laplace transform of this thing, and... Following my rules, I end up with just something that's kind of actually simple. Similarly here for the uh, current uh, capacitor equivalent, right, of the, of the continuity equations. 
I end up with something that, okay, I mean, it's there. What do I do with it? So for a system at rest, those terms here and here go away. We're used to seeing those. We, we talked about what those are. And we're left with just this. Now, if we think about it for just a moment, this looks just like Ohm's Law. And in fact, it really can kind of be treated that way. And that's why we want to call this thing something that's similar to resistance, because this is V equals effectively IR, but it's in this other weird space. So what we call this version of resistance is impedance. And so we define impedance as follows. It's this thing that's attached to the current, or when I multiply it to the current, in the frequency domain, it equals the voltage in the frequency domain. Okay? So that's really interesting, and, and if we think about it, it gives us a whole new realm of possibilities for circuit analysis, and we've only just scraped the surface. We can similarly do the same thing with conductance, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a second, too. But effectively, we're converting, whoops, we're converting frequency domain current into frequency domain voltage, right? By just multiplying it by this ZS, whatever that is. So Z and Y are extremely standard. I mean, you're going to see these over and over again um, in your electrical engineer, especially, I think... I don't know much about um, power engineering because um, that's not really my my field, but I think they use Z and Y ubiquitously, ubiquitously as well. Um, I know physics does. I know um, that uh, signals and systems does, and pretty much all of electrical engineering agrees Z and Y are, are good variables for this, so this is not going to go away for you. Um, Nine out of ten of you are going to see Z and Y for the rest of your career here. Okay. So similarly, we define admittance as follows. It's just the reciprocal, okay? Um, and we're going to use both of these uh, functions in the future. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that um, as we define these, right, we had... Ah, here we are. Um, as we define these, we had for the inductor, the uh, impedance was just SL. And then for the capacitor, we had our duality going on here, where we have the um, the conductance is equal to SC. So you can see that um, depending on what kind of system and what kind of elements I have at play, these pieces will maybe be 1 over S or, you know, S in the numerator. It just depends on how the system is set up. Um, much like, you know, how we had before um, with our continuity equations. So really not much has changed. It's just we're in a different domain and we have different letters for things. Okay, so just if you follow these equations when you're describing the system in the Laplace domain or in the frequency domain, um, they're going to be really helpful for you. Okay, and you won't you won't get lost. So these subscripts are important. Don't forget them. Must be careful with subscripts. Okay. So let's look at a really simple example, and this is straight out of the textbook. And then uh, later on today, I think we have we're gonna probably have quite a bit of time. Uh, so we're gonna do some examples from the homework as well and kind of walk you through some of those. All right, so we have a input forcing function. We have a resistor here, and we have 0.1 farads. Um, and then we're looking at uh, VC here, T. And our question is, you know, we're particularly interested in VC, right? So I have this input forcing function. What happens to VC over time? And then my current comes down through here. Who cares? Whatever. We've seen this a million times. We can solve it. We almost can solve it like two different ways, pretty much, because um, we have those those other, uh, you know, we have our impulse response. We could do it that way. We have our ODE. We could do it that way. Whatever it is, well, we're going to look at yet another way of approaching this system. And this way is really the way that we're going to continue 
using almost exclusively throughout the rest of the course. And th- this approach of impedance and admittance and thinking about these things in, in this frequency type of space. Because, as you might guess, being able to think about things in a frequency kind of way is really handy. So let's go ahead and take the Laplace transform of the circuit and see what we get back out. So each part needs to just be uh, taken at face value and, and transformed through. So let's do that. For resistors, um, they're effectively constant with respect to time, right? So they should be constant also in the frequency domain. So resistors just go to... Um, Actually, I should write it this way. <laughs> they don't really go to resistors. They go to the straight up impedance, which is kind of interesting. Um, so it makes sense that this is actually working as something strongly related to our original concept of resistance. Um, so ZR then is 100. So that's right here. And actually, um, I'm going to redraw the same diagram. Okay, so thanks to some movie magic here, um, I've, I've copied this thing and shrunk the other one. Um, so we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison here. So for ZR, and we'll go ahead and actually edit the color on this too. Okay, just so you're tracking. So ZR is equal to 100. Okay. And... For our VCT, well, VCT goes into the Laplace domain. We have VCS. And we know that this is, uh, this capacitance here was some value C, right? So C is equal to 0.1 farads. And so ZC, ZC is equal to, let's go back to our handy equations right here. It's 1 over S times the capacitance. So we write that out here, 1 over S times the capacitance. So that gives us 1 over, or 0.1, so we'll do a 10 up here, S. Okay, so this is 1 over 0.1 S, which is the same as 10 over S. Okay, so we'll write that over here conveniently, 10 over S. All right, uh, last bit we have here is the input. So Vn, Vn of S, and the Fourier, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Laplace transform of that is just going to be equal to the Laplace transform of 5ut, which we should all know by now, this is just five times one over S, right? Because the Laplace transform of ut is one over S, this is 5 over S. All right. So we've got our, our frequency domain circuit and our time domain uh, circuit. So what can we do from here? Well, actually, it's pretty easy to solve from here. Um, this is effectively just a, a voltage division problem, right? So if I look here... What's going on at uh, VCS? Well, it's dropping over that resistor, ZC, but it's split over ZC and ZR, where ZR is just 100, and it's taking in that original input voltage, and that's my final, and actually I can just do this, whoop, <laughs> cheater method. All right, so... If you're unclear about what this is, this is literally just consider this as voltage division, okay, where there's an impedance right here, okay, and just replace the word impedance with resistor, and you've now got this equation. That's really all this is. Okay, so now if I write this out again, do some more copy-paste, that's most of what I do. Okay, so let's dissect this equation a little bit. Uh, for ZC, I had uh, 10 over S. And for ZR, I just had 100. And for VN, I just had 5 over S. Oops, CS. 
And so when I simplify this, I end up with uh, 5 over s times 10s plus 1. And then this simplifies a little bit further into, I guess we have uh, 0.5 s times s plus 1 over 10. Now, why would I write it like this and instead of like here? Well, what I really want is to keep s's in front and get rid of all those coefficients. So recall that when we uh, simplified uh, back a chapter two ago for the Laplace stuff, we wanted, or for the partial fraction stuff, which I think was last time, we wanted to break this up in such a way that these were just s's here in the front. We didn't want any of those extra coefficients snagging us up when we tried to do the partial fraction. So that's important here too as well. Um, so if we were to do the partial fraction then, we have uh, two fractions that we're looking at. We have the s factor and the s plus 1 over 10 factor. And we're going to get some coefficient here, or term, I guess you could say, and some, some term here. Um, now how does this break up? Well, we can evaluate it at uh, s equals 0 after multiplying by s. Okay, for a1, we're going to solve away. We have 0.5 over s times s plus 1 over 10. And we're going to multiply it by s, so these will cancel. We're going to evaluate at s equals 0 because we're canceling that part out and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, for the other side of the equation, we're going to take this portion. And we have a1 over s times s plus a2. I don't know what that is. A2 over s plus 10 times s. These politely cancel, and this evaluated at s equals 0 makes this whole thing go to 0, this whole portion here. So now we're left with a1 is equal to 0.5 over 1 tenth. Oops, lost a little bit of my, my gravy there. Okay, and so that leaves me with just a1 is equal to 5. Pretty straightforward. Um, if I evaluate at uh, negative one tenth, I can do the same trick. Um, I'm going to forego that process for you here, but you end up with book uses b. A2 is going to be equal to um, negative five then. Okay, same way. But um, s equals minus one tenth and multiply by uh, the s plus 1 over 10, okay, on both sides. All right, so now we've got our equation here. I'm going to write this in green just so we can see it because it's kind of getting cluttered in here, unless you're red-green colorblind, in which case you really probably should have said something to me sooner. Um, I, hope, I hope nobody's colorblind. If you are, please let me know, and I will accommodate that. Absolutely. I've actually, you would be surprised, okay, how many uh, color colorblind people there are in the Air Force, of all places to be colorblind. Um, there's a lot of, you know, colored signals and stuff that are kind of important. So, but yeah, there's a waiver for everything. That's, uh, that's what they say. Okay, so we convert this back into the, uh, the time domain, right? We use the inverse Laplace transform, which really equates to just looking at that table again. Um, these should be pretty easy for you all to solve at this point. If you've been doing the homework, this is almost trivial. Um, the first one's just going to be 5 times ut, right? Which we had coming in, so you should recognize it coming out. And then the other one is just the same thing, but it's just been uh, time shifted. Or, I'm sorry, frequency shifted. So we just add a frequency shift on the front. So we have the minus 5, and then we have the frequency shift to account for. So e to the minus 10t, remember to change that sign up. Oh, I'm sorry, not minus 10, minus 10t over 10. Sorry, it's a, it's a factor of 1 tenth, not 10. Threw myself off there. And uh, then we have ut, okay? So no time delay here, just a frequency delay, and that, um, or I'm sorry, a, a frequency shift, 
and that frequency shift occurs on the on the second term here. And then this is equal to, as you should recognize, V C T. So this completely defines our voltage uh, over C uh, for all time. That's it. Okay, let's do another example. So I don't know. Let's let's change up the colors a little bit. Let's start with blue. Okay, we're gonna start in the blue. We'll do a similar circuit, but this one has an inductor and a capacitor in it. So we got a nice little LC circuit going on. These were a little bit more confusing because they gave us those uh, those second order systems, if you recall. This would be an undamped system. 10 e to the minus 5 t volts. We also call this one the uh, LC tank circuit. All right. So VC T goes between those two, uh, 50 millifarads, and we've got some Henry's over here. Gotta love the Henry's. I, I love Henry's. Why? For reasons you probably would be surprised, we get we get our own pork or our own beef uh, from like a local farmer. So we always get a whole pig or a whole cow and have massive deep freezers. But for some reason, we've named all of our uh, pigs Louie and all of our beef Henry. So yeah, I, I do love Henry's because they make delicious steak. <laughs> So now let's convert this into the Laplace domain, okay? And use that handy dandy Laplace transform. And what do we end up with? Well, we still got all of our pieces in there, but they look rather different from a frequency space perspective. Okay, so the first one is our input function. Our input function is just 10 times, right? 10 times some stuff. Okay, when I had a um, e to the minus a t applied to anything. It just frequency shifted it for me. So I end up with a shift of five in the frequency domain of the unit step function, right? So this is just one over s and then shift it plus five. Okay. Remember to change that sign because the form here, the form here is e to e to the minus a t. Okay. So that's very important. Okay, so I L of S is now flowing through, and our impedance here, ZL, is equal to 0 0.2 times S. And the nice thing about this is that if we use all of our old standard units, everything just works out nicely in the uh, frequency space. They all play nicely. Okay, everything converts back in um, just as we would expect it to. Okay, well, what about um, VC here, VCS? Notice here for Z, ZL, if I go back, uh, here it is, Z, oops, ZL is equal to S times L, okay? And now ZC is equal to 1 over S times C. So you can, you can see, no pun intended, um, the difference here between these two different impedances based on which uh, element they're applied to. So as the capacitor, the capacitance gets larger here, the impedance goes down. As the inductance gets larger, the impedance goes up. And it depends on our value of S. Okay, so that's gonna become very important uh, as we move through, but anyways. That's for, that's for later chapters. Okay, so what we have here for uh, VCS, um, we're going to figure that, that kind of stuff out. Um, but the impedance here, ZC, is equal to 1 over, or I'm sorry, 20 over S. Because we have that factor of 20, um, which is 1 over, 1 over 50 millifarads gives me that 20. Okay, so... Moving right along, we now have all the pieces that we need, and we can build the circuit. So we have V, V, C, S, and we do the same kind of voltage division that we did before. So we have the 
V or sorry, Z C. Right, what well, our impedance, and it's divided over um, the sum times V in. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now it's just a math problem. Okay, so we have 20 over S, 20 over S plus S over 5. That's going to get a little funky there. 10 over S plus 5. Okay, we do some, some simple algebra here. Okay, if we just pop that uh, S down into the denominator here, we end up with 20 over 20 plus uh, 1 fifth S squared. Okay, and we're going to keep this 10 over S plus 5 along for the ride for a moment. Um, simplifying a little bit further, we end up with, we want to get rid of this, right, and put it put the S squared up front so we have a nice polynomial. So we have S squared plus 100. We multiply by 5 on uh, bottom and 5 on top. So we end up with 100 there. And then we still have that 10 uh, S plus 5 along for the ride, okay? And right away, some alarm bells should be going off here for this one, you should be saying, hey, this looks like a, a cosine or a sine something here, depending on, you know, what kind of S's I end up with up here. Um, what do I, you know, be alert, be aware. Okay, so the final bit here is a thousand over these two factors. And since it is factoring over that, we know right off the bat that we're going to have something that is sine or cosine, hopefully. <laughs> we break this up into the partial fraction. The first factor is just S plus 5, so that'll be easy to do. And then BS plus C, I'm going to do it just like the book has, um, instead of the A1s everywhere. You, you can do it however you want. It really doesn't matter. And for the purposes of a test, I, I frankly don't care. Um, as long as you're consistent, that's all that matters. Okay, so we have S squared plus 10 down there. Um, let's do the first one, you know, the A. So we'll solve for A first. It's easy. Uh, we have 1,000 over uh, S squared plus 100. And we're going to evaluate it at S equals minus 5. Okay, this has got to be equal to uh, A just by itself uh, because this part here is going to cancel out when I multiply the whole system through by S plus 5. And I evaluated it at... Uh, um, S equals negative 5, this all goes to 0, okay, for that part. Okay, so if I do that there, I end up with, oh, I'll just write it out here, A equals 8. Okay, you know how to do these, it's not, not complicated. Um, I will walk through the other one, though, just, just for the sake of argument. Um, for this one, we want to con uh, choose a convenient value of... Uh, of s so let me write this uh, I guess we'll just take this bit here and copy it hang on so now that I've re-expressed this for you here um, knowing that I guess I could write these nicely here a equals uh, what did we say 8 okay now we're going to solve for c and to do that, we just uh, evaluate at a convenient value, S equals zero. So that's going to make things nice. It's almost looking like sheet music notation or something in here, right? Okay. All right. Well, hopefully one of my future videos will, will have a, a new accordion to, to bust out here. Um, I got a smaller one, so it'll be... Uh, it'll be and, it, and it sounds a lot better, too. Okay, I kind of have to hate on Weird Al Yankovic for a minute because he, like, ruined the American accordion for everyone. And the accordion is such a cool instrument. And if I have any of you that are from Europe or anything, you know that the accordion is awesome. Or from, like, uh, anywhere in, in, in Central or South America, like, it's a big deal. And I think even in Korea and China, like, the accordion is a well-respected instrument. But for some reason, in America, the accordion is not respected at all. And I hate it. Needs to, needs to change. I'm going to change it, although I'm kind of goofy, so that doesn't probably help the accordion's case um, at all. And I'm not very good. So there's that. <laughs> okay. Oops. We're going to evaluate at S equals zero, which is a convenient value for us. 
And so we just rewrite the entire equation here at 0. 0 squared plus 100. 0 plus 5 is equal to 8 over 0 plus 5 plus 0 times b plus c over s squared plus 10 squared. And so you can see here that the only thing left is, uh, is in fact, c. So we do a little bit of work here um, with the algebra. We end up with, was well, effectively 200 is equal to um, 160, I guess, plus c. And then you can, this goes like that. Um, and then you end up with C is equal to 40. And actually, I'll write that in red. Okay. And then for B, uh, we're just going to use another convenient value. And we're going to pick S equals 1. Usually 0, 1, negative 1 are, are convenient values. Um, why do we pick it here? Eh, it's just easier to calculate, honestly. In practice, you can use this or the other method of just multiplying, or sorry, adding them together. So for B, we evaluate everything at 1. We end up with the following equation. ends up being 1,000 over 6 times 101. 8 over 6 plus B over 101 plus 40 over 101. Okay, 101 everywhere. Okay, so we simplify this a little bit, and we end up with the following. We have uh, 1,000... It's 1048. I'm not going to write all the steps out, guys, because um, you can, you should be able to do, whoops, you should be able to do math uh, pretty easily by now. I hope you're going to be an electrical engineer. So we end up with B is equal to minus 8. Simple arithmetic gets us the whole equation that we needed. And now with our powers combined, we form a, an inverse Laplace transform, Okay. So let's see, what, let's see what that looks like. Um, we end up with the following. Capital VCS is equal to 8 over S plus 5 plus minus 8 times S over S squared plus 10 squared plus 40 over S squared plus 10 squared as well. Okay, so we do have some sine and cosine component here. Notice that when we kind of started off, one might have been tempted to say, uh, where was it? Right here, right? That I had just, maybe since there were, were no S's up here, that maybe I was just stuck with one type. But as it turns out, when I did the partial fractions, I ended up with both the sine and the cosine, okay? So effectively, only the uh, only the sine has the constant there, but we ended up with some cosines as well because of this S. Okay, so here we go. We translate this into the, let's use a color. Let's get some colors going on. We're going to go back in time with the inverse Laplace, okay? We're going from S to T. So we end up with V, C, T must be equal to 8 times, and notice here we're doing that same frequency shift we had before, so no big deal, we just do e to the minus 5 times t times whatever it was, well it's just 1 over s, so 1 over s is ut, everyone see that? This falls to the outside, this is a frequency shift, and 1 over s, if I get rid of that part, and that part, which is what I'm left over, 1 over s is just the ut, so that's how you build these, alright? It's always... Yeah, you guys know you guys know what you're talking about. Okay, so minus eight goes along for the ride. Um, we have to do what up here? That's right, nothing. We don't have to do anything because the form of our expression here is s squared plus ten squared, right? Where this constant gets uh, is kind of our our frequency that we're our, that we uh, hone in on for the cosine. So what we have then is just simply cosine of 10t, and it's always important to include this. Sometimes I drop it off on accident, um, but for a real answer on a real quiz or test, you need to have this in here, or it's technically wrong, um, and you will lose points for it. 
Okay, so then you have plus 40. And then what do we need to do here? Well, actually we need to do a little bit of balancing first, okay? So it's not quite plus 40. What is it? Well, if it's 10 here, I need a 10 up here, right? So I can just break this apart. So it's four times 10. So that's what I'm actually gonna do is four and then sine of 10 T. And that makes sense that these would have the same frequency here, right? And they should. Because when we divide it out, um, this denominator had the same 10 in both spots there. And so it's kind of forcing this part up here to work as well. But um, from a larger scheme of things, you're not going to get a different frequency back out. And when we talk about resonance, you're going to see this a little bit more too. But you, you can't just magically get to, you know, a bunch of different frequencies all over the place from, you know, one very simplistic system. Um, you need to be able to do some, some other things. So anyways, um, I'm going to save that bit for next time. So yeah, just know that these should be the same when you have a, a simple system here. Okay. And the UT goes along for the ride. And uh, that's it. This matches what we got when we did the ODE methods. It really isn't too bad if you can, you know, if you have a calculator, this goes like super fast because all you have to do is just plug in the number, crunch it, and you're done. Just don't make any calculator errors. Check your work. That's the biggest thing with this is just check your work. Um, and if you don't goof up, then you're in good shape. No fat fingers, no, no problems. I, on the other hand, have a lot of fat fingers, and so I have to run it through the calculator like four times before I'm confident, like, okay, I didn't screw up. <laughs> I mess it up all the time. But that's okay. We make mistakes, and we move forward. And that's why I'm being punished by, by teaching you guys, because I can't, I can't use a calculator properly. No, I'm kidding. I love being here with you guys, even though it's just me sitting in a room um, talking to myself. So there's that. Next, let's do some homework, okay? We'll do some homework problems with you guys. I've been neglecting you, uh, like my children, you know, to teach this course. <laughs> so I should probably probably run through some homework. Okay, what do we have here? Let's look at 20 is pretty good. Okay, so set 21 actually has some really good problems in it. I like these because they're perfect toy problems. You will see something like this on the uh, on a quiz and on the final, but they might they're going to be different. They're not going to be the same circuit. So if you practice this and try it with different uh, simple circuit setups, you're going to be in really good shape. Okay. So notice here that a lot of these are in parallel. Um, there may be some series examples. Don't know. Maybe. Just saying. So let's see here. Let's look at the first one. So we didn't talk about this yet today too much. We have this um, admittance, right? It's the reciprocal of impedance. And as a matter of fact, we don't care that it's the reciprocal of impedance until the very end, okay? Um, more or less, we just do what we do with Z, and then we worry about it at the end. Okay, so to construct this, what we do is we start with Z in, and the input impedance is defined as, it's for the whole system, right? So if I was kind of closing this off, and actually it's probably better as a dotted line, but if I was looking at the impedance right across here, then it's going to be defined by these two elements in uh, parallel with each other. Well, so we just take the Laplace transform of the impedance for this element and this element, and then take them in parallel. So for capacitor, we know that it's one over SC for ZC. And for resistor, well, um, it's just the resistor. Just keep track of your units here and be careful. But we put these in parallel with one another and we end up with the uh, product, right? over the sum using this notation, the parallel operator. And that's exactly what we see here for the input impedance. And then we just take the reciprocal, we simplify it and then take the reciprocal of it. Um, simplifies to this guy here, 
Let me zoom in. I don't know why I never zoom in. All right, we're zoomed in. And uh, once we take the reciprocal, we just have our solution. We can break it up if you want. Um, and that's it. So this is just calculating things in terms of impedance and admittance because later on what we're going to find is that we don't really need to necessarily transform back to time just yet. There are certain things that we want to do with these two variables, okay? They become very important for us in our system to try to design things and analyze things. So that's why we're not deep diving back into the other domains or anything like that. It's just is what it is. Okay, so for this one, it's just these things in parallel. They're in parallel. Um, these are the equations that we showed you earlier today. Um, you do some math. It gets kind of complicated, right? It's not too terribly bad. Just keep track of stuff and be cautious. If you have trouble with fractions, man, it's going to be a long course. <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to teach you guys fractions again, okay? I, I love math, but not enough to, to teach uh, fractions to a bunch of electrical engineers that, that should have learned it like 10 years ago. Okay. Um, is there any weird ones in here? This one's a little weird. Okay, so what do we have here? So we know by definition that uh, our impedance, we had this equation, right? So what what the solution has here is that we're looking at a KCL equation. So what we're actually trying to solve for in this one is the Z out. So what is Z out? Well, Z out is going to be defined by this element and this element, right? Okay. What can I do with that? Well, if I have this current running through, I know that I can take the sum of the current running through each of these two elements, right? It splits between here and here. So effectively I have the voltage drop over the resistor. And then I have the uh, voltage drop times GM. So this is kind of guiding me through. And uh, the directed current, right? So what I end up with is I factor out the V, I have my total current is equal to this, and then I rearrange to isolate V is equal to I times something, and then now with that voltage and that current there, I now have a form that looks more like something I'm familiar with. So this is goes, right, this is V equals I R effectively. But since we're dealing with the frequency domain, this actually becomes a Z, okay? Now, are we justified in doing this here? Let's, let's take a step back. What kind of reactive elements do I have in the circuit? That's right, none, okay? I don't have any reactive elements. So, effectively, this kind of becomes, this GM is a constant, right? This RO is a constant. And they just go along for the ride. We directly translate those constants through the frequent, through to the frequency domain to generate our impedance, okay? This is a really goofy problem. Now, if, what would happen if you had inductors and capacitors in here? This would become a little bit more complicated because effectively, you'd have to account for that Laplace transform of those elements and their, you know, define their impedance properly. Um, in this case, because we have those constants, we don't have to worry about that in this case. Okay, so Z is simply just that constant. It's this constant times I. And so when I rewrite this, I re-express it, um, I get back out this equation. And it's just doing a little bit of algebra to get here. Quite frankly, guys, um, I'm not going to hold you accountable for writing it in some unknown way. But I did notice on uh, on quiz one, and this is 
a day late and a dollar short, right? Because it's almost quiz four. Um, but for example, on the very first question of quiz one, I said, write V out in terms of V in, right? And uh, some of you would write things like this. V out over V in is equal to some stuff. So when I ask you for something in terms of something else or you know, a, a specific prompt, make sure you read what the prompt actually is because it's important that you write things uh, the way you're asked to so that you can plug them in nicely in other, in other areas. Anyways, that's, that's, that's enough lecturing for today. Um, and probably enough lecturing for today in the other way too. <laughs> enough of this particular lecture.